Hello and welcome back to the UK National Championships 2017. I'm here with Matt Bell. Hey, how you doing Luke? Good, we had a pretty good first round. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so we had uh, Jared Stone, the former, I guess now, national champion. Defending national defending. champion. That's, that's, why I like that's a good way of putting it, the defending. Yeah. Like Ram Posi Ram, positive he's got a shield ready to go. Yeah. Oh, he is. Um, okay. My tie is not straight. I don't know why it is. I think it's mine. You know, it's, we're here anyway. to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, we are here to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so um, to continue the theme of national champions, we, we have another one here. We have uh, Ben Sherman. So some of you may know him as the, the guy who always wears a beanie. He always wears a beanie and he's got long hair. I don't know what he looks like now, actually, now I think about it, because he shaved it off at one point. So has he got the hat and the beanie? Does he have the beanie and the hair? Like, if he doesn't, I'm going to get I'm not going to know who he is. Yeah, maybe. Okay, okay, well, we should probably get to the table and find out. Let's have a look. Uh, we've got a Ben Sherman piloting a Mermel deck in this format, of yeah. all things. That's what he actually won the national championships with. Uh, versus Jordan Gallagher. Gallagher. Jordan Gallagher. Yeah. Very, Galicia, very sorry. Not Galicia, yeah. Very appropriate, considering we are in Manchester. Uh, he's playing Demise True Draco, which is actually the version of the deck that I really prefer. Mostly because there's less combos to get wrong in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just playing with the fact is my cards are better than yours. I'm not, I don't need to worry about a 20-step Norton combo and detaching yeah. the materials in the correct order. Yeah. But first, we see a nice throwback here, the, uh, the Mermail combos. Are we in 2017? We are definitely in 2017. <laughs> okay. Gets the Cestus one, is it? Yeah. Cestus. And it gets, uh, is that the one in the spell cards? I can ne I never remember which way around the other. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Uh, we're going to see... Atlantean Infantry being added. Cestus. I thought it was Cestus or something. Anyway, just bring that up now. So yeah, he's already burnt through his uh, Dragoons. One of the Dragoons. Yeah, there's two of them there. Yeah, you got two dragoons. It's a pretty good start, right? When you have them in Megalo as well. Yeah, uh, it's traps. Okay. Yeah, this one's traps. So as soon as a trap effect is activated on your opponent's side, you have to negate it and send something away. And, and there's some diva. Summon. Yeah, diva as well. Gonna go probably get um, Neptibis. Yeah, most likely. Actually, no. He's, Neptibis is an ultimate rare. That looks like marksman. Yeah, he's going for. Uh... Marksman. Are we? I called it inventory. Oh, wow, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Marksman. Um, he's... Is he going to be Trishula? Uh, turn one. Yes, Bruce. he is! Yes! <laughs> Trishula! <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. So, what's he going to hit? Uh, what is that? It's a True Draco Apocalypse. Okay, um, yeah. The interesting thing is, um, Jordan opened two of those. Uh, what year Draco is it? Ah, <laughs> Anything can happen. I yeah, guess. <laughs> that's the way of looking at it. Um, We've got Draco Sack as well. Oh wow, this is this is a cool opening, just because it has Trishula in it. Now we're gonna see some Draco Sack tokens. The actual Draco Sack tokens, in fact. That's that's uh, pretty cool. Set card. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty good setup. Um, yeah. Not terribly resist. Well, a little bit resistant to board wipes, but. Not I didn't see if he opened any hand traps. Uh, sorry, I didn't see if Ben Sherman opened any hand traps. I don't think traps. so. I think he opened just five, no, he just opened five water ones. monsters. He just opened the big combos. Yeah. Alright, so we can see Pot Duality, Cosmic Cyclone, uh, True Draco, Ignis, the Heat, the True Draco, and that last one is not True Draco Heritage, it's... Where are you? Where? Disciples of the Draco Phoenix. Um, which is now going to give away uh, which version of this deck that uh, Jordan is playing. Yeah, well, we've we've already seen the trap card now. Generally, the uh, the zoo variant doesn't play those trap cards either, does it? Uh, in some versions, play the other one, True King's Return. Right, but not uh, not so often in Apocalypse. And again, you always have to uh, assume that your opponent doesn't necessarily stick to the mold that you think yeah. that everyone else should. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can actually trick yourself a lot of times in competitive play thinking your opponent's not playing a version because they've made a choice that seem, just seems suboptimal to you because you don't know the rest of their deck. Yeah. Okay. So, diagram? Probably going for uh, Dino, Dynamite Knight, the True Draco Fighter. Dynamite Knight. <laughs> I love the names. 
Oh, he hasn't got his masterpiece, so he's... Yeah, he's gonna go masterpiece. He's got Ignis, I suppose. And he's got the trap card, so he can actually deploy it in his opponent's turn. Yeah, as long as he does that before Ben's able to get another mermaid monster out and play the Cestus. Cetus. Let's go with Cestus. I'm pretty sure Cestus is a thing. Yeah, and he's gonna destroy his opponent's Drifula with the Draco. Yeah, so he's just gone straight out. Apocalypse. Straight for the masterpiece. Again, another common theme that we're probably going to see this weekend is... Uh, yeah, it's one of the format-defining cards. It sets the rules for the format. Yeah, kind um, of like Dark Shrouded. Yeah, basically, if your deck doesn't have reliable outs, in fact, uh, Masterpiece is one that encourages you to diversify your answers to it, because you can gain immunities, uh, different immunities based on what your... Uh, what you actually your opponent tributes for it, so you've got to yeah. you've got to make sure that you can answer it in any of its forms, and that your opponent could reliably be playing more than one of these. Yeah. Um, in this particular card of the Mayas variant, you can see uh, masterpiece appearing multiple times, as you did with Dark yeah. Destroyer. So we see Ignis coming down here, popped the one of one of the Dracosac tokens with the Apocalypse, the, the set Apocalypse. Oh, not the not uh, apocalypse, return. sorry, uh, yeah, return, uh, and then just attacked over one of them. Touch the card, and if his opponent activates anything, he's going to go get himself a spell card. Yeah. Dracosac means business. That's the irritating thing there is that uh, Dracosac can't just attack over the Ignis. It's just going to bounce off. Nice. Oh, he's he's, he's going to get a little bit of damage in, but um. Oh, he gains he's got three hundred attack, so he just throws his Dracosac straight in the bin. Yeah, because of the extra additional attack from the field spell. So that attack was just bad in both both ways really he wasn't going to get rid of his monster um oh and he just okay. he did it before he didn't activate anything so he was just trying to get it off the field yeah so could... i was kind of holding my breath here to see if there was some other reason for ben doing that but no he just threw a sack away because that, that attack wouldn't have cleared the problem either way um, no and then the cosmic cyclone is now going to give him just a peace of mind over anything else that that back row is not something super scary. Yeah, well, since Ben threw his hand at the table pretty hard uh, in turn ones, uh, and Jordan got away with resolving diagram, you can assume his opponent doesn't have Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits, and yeah. probably not a lot of the other search, uh, other hand traps as well. Yeah. Either. Um, so now he, yeah, he's going to be Heritage. Is that Heritage? Yeah, that is Heritage. I'm not used to seeing all these cards in their actual rarities. <laughs> okay, we're going to see the extra normal summon. Uh, now there's a masterpiece with tons of cards in the great. Oh, and he's going to get the extra draws from the heritage as well. Oh, and there's a joyous to stop that. Okay, that's in that's interesting. I guess actually throwing uh, the joy spring at the diagram is really subpar because you're basically committing yourself to. Removing that card next turn, yeah, uh, and it's kind of like a minor inconvenience to your opponent, and mm -hmm. then you have to make you have to then jump through the hoops to make sure you remove it. Yeah, um, I don't think Ben's in a great spot here. No, he's no, Mermel is a deck that depends on playing multi-card combos against a deck that excels at disrupting two plus card combos. It's like I play this guy, I need to play something to make that one better, and then um, you just see Masterpiece just removes it, and it's immune to spells and monster effects. Yeah. And he's just going to snipe his opponent's back row. Yeah, that's a chalice. Uh, which wouldn't have done anything because he's uh, immune to it anyway. Um, diagram can destroy that. Uh, his face up card, and then he'll switch himself. Yeah, more fuel for Masterpiece here. Yeah, you should just assume that uh, Masterpiece is going to be able to take cards out if, uh, yeah. during both players' turns. So he's taking two cards a turn. And that is not an exchange Mermel ever wins. No. <laughs> Mer Mermel really... I wouldn't say that they generate massive amounts of advantage consistently anyway. They, yeah. They're quite good at generating big board presences. They're like, they, the, the advantage they give you is a life point advantage where you're just throwing them at your opponent's face. Yeah. Um, whereas it's just not going to... It's not going to work here when he's actually got to play a, a grind game against a deck that's playing Card of Demise for starters. Yeah. You always, you can always get yourself into a trick yourself into a position where you think you've got control, and then all of a sudden, card of the mice comes down. Case in point, and here's a bunch of cards. Oh yeah. look, they go face down. I don't even have to discard them. 
And the thing that I really love how Card of the Mice fits in with this is the spell and trap cards give you the extra normal summon so that you can still get the cards out of your hand and you don't actually have to discard them at the end. Yeah. Sign of a good player there looking at the cards that he's got from Desires. And their skill drain um, as well. Uh, so just to, just to top it all off. I remember skill drain in Mermel format, in fact, was really awful. <laughs> No, well, when you just play against, <laughs> yeah, you just flip skill drain, and the mermaid deck just goes like, "Oh, I don't really know what to yeah. do." And Ben picks up his guards. Yeah. That's um, turning off Teus and things. He came oh. out with a super aggressive start. Such an exciting Trishula play, and then it didn't really go anywhere. I don't know. Normally with Trishula, you tend to clear your opponent's back row and aim to get the one monster on the field, then one card out of their hand, one card in the graveyard. And he just went all in on that Trishula straight away. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure why. To be, to I guess be if he if he if he took away one of the really important combo pieces, he, he didn't know what he was playing against. Bear in mind. Oh, well, maybe he was doing it for the information. Um, yeah, that as well. I think if it was Zoo, for example, and he took away like the only Rat Peer in his hand, for example, or the 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 Tig Tomborg or something like that, you know, something that was really vital piece of the combo puzzle, yeah. then then I think that would be really worth it. I mean, we, we'd be we'd be we'd be talking completely different right now if Ben just took away the only rap here out of Jordan's hand. Let's be honest. Well, yeah. I mean, looking at it, what else would he have done? What other synchros could he have possibly summoned with with that play? He's not going to leave the debo in attack mode. No, exactly. And he's also not making deco talker as we've already established. Which <laughs> I'm going to keep pushing this one. I, I like deco talker. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I guess I guess making the synchro just as perfectly makes sense. Um, yeah, you're not so. doing anything else with it, may as well take, use it to leverage some advantage over my opponent and get the information. Yeah, I, I, I think the play was just, was completely right. Uh, so Ben here has the advantage because he's playing a deck that's considered one of the outsider decks, that his side deck can be very tailored to deal with... Um, Specific meta choices. The, the meta choices that um, the rest of the format is playing. Um, and Ben gets to go first again, if he so chooses. Um, He's got Anti-Spell Fragrance and Drawn Lockbirds, which are very good in this matchup. He's also got Imperial Order as well. Um, probably not playing the Twin Twisters against a True Draco deck that takes all of your cards away if you start aiming at the back row. Interestingly, Ben decided to play Mystical Space Defoons instead of Cosmic Cyclones in this format. But, um, you know, it gets the job done, but you, again, you run into trouble when you come against these True Draco decks that... Um, Gain cards, well, basically almost do an equal exchange just by you removing their cards. Yeah, that seems very strange for him to do that. Oh, well, it's still pretty good against your opponent's dimensional barriers and stuff like that, but Mermels can put out a pretty is, friendly is, field. Is there any reason mm -hmm. what? Like, there's no situation where Mystical Space Defense is better than Cosmic Cyclone. It doesn't cost a thousand life forms. In time. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, that is so kind of. That's less than. That's that's a, a situation that's going to come up way less than um, any other situation for, for Cyclone. Anyway, yeah. I guess and Cycloning in the true uh, the Zodiac match is just uh, not really super exciting either. Ooh, Ben's opened double draw on lot, but oh, he's also first. opened uh, Abyss Double, Tears Tears. double, and double Tears, yeah. Dragon. No, is, is it two Tears? It looks like a Dragoons. Oh yeah, no, sorry, that is Dragoons. Dragoons. Yeah. They're all ultimate, right? It's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that, a pretty good hand. Teos, yeah, that makes that hand completely different. Yeah, so Teos, and he's got a and, um, spike. Abyss spike as well, yeah. And Ben elected to go second. Yeah. Because he wants the first turn of attacking in his Mermel deck. Because yeah. the first turn is kind of difficult for Mermels yeah. when they know they're not going to be playing a, grind, a late grind game. He's going to be able to draw a lot better here as well. See the drone lockbird. The drone lockbird here. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what else is in Ben's hand. Oh yeah, well, he's got double draw on lockbird, so oh, he can use one. He may as well. Yeah. Okay. Get, yeah. Get it done and busted. Sure. He slows his opponent down by turn, and then he'll stumble his opponent's next turn. Yeah. I'm just gonna see a set card pass. I think that was Lost... Was that Lost Wind? No, he's not playing Lost Wind. Let's have a look at his opening hand from where he was to tell. Uh, oh, it's super shiny. It's oh, it's a True Trigger. Ah, okay, yeah. Is it, he's, is um, it Apocalypse? No, it's uh, True King's Return, return I believe. Uh, so he can tribute summon in his opponent's turn. 
Yeah, uh, break up his opponent's combo because of the trap card, and um, also get to deploy his the card he just added to his hand. Uh, Majesty Maiden, the Draco, Draco caster. Yeah, I love how they they interact with your opponent. Just like you, you can, you don't stop your opponent from playing any cards, but you give your like you give yourself advantage when your opponent plays cards. It's pretty, it, pretty strange. It makes it. Ex extremely difficult to play against this deck because you have to make plays and then yeah. the true deco deck almost then pays for it immediately and it has such a ridiculous way of hard punishing you with a masterpiece set uh, setup to deal with your set of outs mm -hmm. it's it, it just puts so much pressure on all around so where does ben go here i mean i i, I can't really see many more Lines of place here when he's he's having to throw away. No, his opponent uh, is giving up his. Um... I'd say he's giving up his trap card, but the thing is, with the uh, knuckles, as he's affectionately called by our players at home, or Dynamist <laughs> Knight, the true Draco fighter, um, he can just get another trap card out, and then uh, Jordan could be potentially threatening a masterpiece from his hand in his opponent's turn. Yeah, he doesn't have it, but we do know that Jordan does have a Majesty Maiden mid Draco caster. Yeah, it seems like a little bit of a strange, um, a strange choice okay. to play Mermail at this event. Uh, but Ben is playing Kaijus in there, which is actually very, very good Kaiju. against the uh, card of demise ver versions of the True Draco deck. Yeah. I think uh, I think Ben just chose a deck that he knows quite well and decided he wanted to play this. I mean, it's it's quite a steep event, um, steep investment into this into this format. Um, if you haven't already picked up the cards now, everyone knows these are the cards to chase. Yeah, exactly. So that makes kind of it, trying to trade for them um, pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, so you know, maybe he just decided um, he's going to come to nationals, uh, play the deck that he knows, and maybe consider something different for the WCQ. Yeah. Yeah, which he'll, he'll certainly be going to. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to count him out yet. He's he's obviously a previous national champion, and he. He knows, so he knows what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. If there's a way out using these mermail cards, he will. Mm, and we saw the ghost over as well. Yeah. That's my second favorite card in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> the recently errated Brionic. Yep. I love Brionic. I used to use Brionic for um, frog related. That is so TK. awkward. Uh, because he just activates it, sticks a trap card down, he puts the dino back to his hand, and then he can just retribute summon it and remove his opponent's card. That is weird. Yeah, that is a strange interaction, isn't it? That's just a miserable place to be in, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, he's just gonna immediately... Yeah, and now if you activate another effect, I can... Is it hard once per turn on the... Uh, on the knuckles, or is it just... Uh... No, it's just once per turn. So yeah, he, now you can just yeah. the next time Ben activates something, he just gets yeah. another trap card. That's, that was an Ignis I checked, but I can only assume they're all the same. So yeah, I see diagram. Shrine the Ghost Ogre. He's confident now that he's. Yeah, uh, you can you can see Jordan suddenly accelerates his players here. Yeah, he's like, I don't need this Ghost Ogre. I, need, I don't need to worry about because he knows his opponent's in a simplified game state. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that is not where Mermels want to be. No, absolutely not. And this is what's actually uh, super cool about this card, um, Disciples of the Draco, uh, True Draco Phoenix, is you get to shuffle um, True Draco cards back into your deck. So this deck gets to continually present threats to your opponent. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be doing this. He's just going to be um, setting up. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he made no cards. I'm not entirely sure what he's top decking here. Maybe, he, maybe Soul Charge? Possibly. In fact, if he goes, even if he just drew top deck, Soul Charge, no, Soul Charge. he's not even playing it, so yeah. okay. Um, he's got two Dark Hole and Regeki. Slumbers as well. He's got Slumbers. The yeah. Slumbers would put him in it, but um, Jordan will then just trigger both of his guys and. That's a good point, yeah. Just <laughs> set up for the following turn. Oh, there's an instant fusion. Okay. Jordan just decided on whether he activates anything. Yeah. He like can trigger. He Ben's can trigger there. both and get himself a masterpiece. 
and then get himself the material to tribute summon the masterpiece, then remove his opponent's cards, and then banish. Yeah, I think I don't see Ben getting um, winning this one. Yep, here we go. Masterpiece, there he is. And yep, I'll summon this guy. I'm gonna activate the yep. effects. Tribute, tribute. Yeah, gobble up your cards and yeah. take take that away. I mean, yeah, and then Ben's just like, yeah, go on, you got it. it. Wow, like, that's the problem with this kind of format when you when your deck relies on consolidating all of your resources into a big single big push. Yeah, and there is so much disruption open. Yeah, um, that was that was just textbook Yu-Gi-Oh for for this for this format. To be honest, yeah. uh, a deck that requires multiple cards to make interactions with your opponent. Yeah, and set up. Um, now you set yourself up versus a deck that um, just is going to wait for you to get to the weakest moments in your plays and just break you apart. Yeah, I think in fact that that's what kind of ended up pushing Mermail out of the out of the formats. Really, was was this kind of immediate disruption, and Mermail just didn't have that. They they don't they don't have that ability. They had Dracosac, which don't get me wrong, when Dracosac came out was insane. Dracosac was really powerful. But you know, yeah. Well, it was uh, at its time. You know, it was yeah. that was where the format was. Yeah. Um, like right now, if, you, if we if we had to re redo Dracosac for the new format, I, I guess we would have to put once once during either player's turn on it. Uh, he's turning the tokens into link spiders. Yeah, I guess it's so. It's a saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's still an option. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd have to read Dracosac. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I've seen that card. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, um, so I think that, that that match was over pretty quickly, so we're going to be able to grab an interview with um, with John Galga here. So yeah. yeah, we'll be right back and we'll uh, we'll get John here to tell us how he felt the match went. Pretty good, I imagine. 